And that's a what, very, very yeah. That's why it's, it's so funny because he's called Ken Allen, and Ken Allen the orangutan would just escape from his cage. Well, I want to find the article now about Ken Allen the orangutan. Okay. I fucking love <laughs> Ken Allen. I'm typing right now, folks. Um, Ken but, Allen. Oh, I right. really want to know. Start there. I want. Hmm. What do we name this one? So like, well, we've got like you know DK over there. We've got bananas over here. We've got like chimpy over there. This one's Ken Allen. Yeah. So this is. I'm just going to read the today I found out article about it because it's fucking hilarious. So possessing a fine mind for strategy, mechanically inclined with a true and loyal friends, and a fair amount of luck, the greatest zoo jailbreak artist of all time, Ken Allen. The El Chapo of orangutans. Born at San Diego Zoo in 1971, Ken's early life was marked by sadness when he was removed from his mother's care. Zuko was felt on the verge of smothering him to death. Named after two of his rescuers, Ken Willingham and Ben Allen, uh, after removal, he became a rather comfortable with humans who helped raise him. Uh, perhaps zookeepers could have anticipated Ken's later escapes, since even as a young adolescent, according to the San Diego Zoo, he would regularly unscrew the bolts in his cages at night, roam the nursery, and then return and put his cage back together in the morning. <laughs> That's the best part. The fact he puts the cage back together yes. so people... Are, well, no one will know what's going on. No one will know that I've been doing this. Suspecting something was amiss, the Zuki was ultimately caught him at this and his nightly fun was ended. As with many human teenagers, when Ken was 14, he decided to test his boundary when his first pen escape. On June 13th, 1985, climbing up over the retaining wall of his enclosure, friendly and confident, Ken reportedly calmly strolled along with patrons of the zoo, observing other animals before zookeepers learned of his escape. <laughs> So he just walked around the zoo. That'd be so good. You're just walking around the zoo. You look to your left and there's just an orangutan. It's hanged, just chilling. Chilling Although zoo officials feared Ken's escape would create a PR disaster, as he was so mild-mannered, the opposite happened and Ken ultimately became a folk hero to the point free Ken Allen t-shirts and bumper stickers began to appear. Not wanting a repeat performance, zoo officials beefed up security, including installing a large moat with a massive wall to keep the 250-pound orangutan in. However, just a few weeks later, on July 29th, 1985, Ken escaped again. <laughs> However, this time, he used his time a bit more productively and went to the pen, holding his arch enemy, an orangutan named Otis. When zookeepers arrived, they found Ken pelting the orangutan with rocks. <laughs> Oh God. Ken got vicious. <laughs> just, just what happens when you turn up and it's just Ken throwing rocks at him. Uh, on August 13th, 1985, Ken called upon his ingenuity once again and found a branch of sufficient size and strength to use like a crowbar. Enlisting the help of one of his lady friends, an orangutan named Vicky, Ken instructed her on how to pry open the exit using the branch. Successful, Vicky freed both of them and they were once again captured almost immediately. <laughs> After his third escape, Ken was moved for a time while the official spent thousands of dollars investigating his enclosure, even hiring experienced rock climbers to find every finger, toe and foothold in the enclosure. Further attempts were made to improve the design of his enclosure by attempting to watch Ken probe his pen for a potential escape spot. However, Ken soon seemed to figure out what his captors were trying to do and simply cease such attempts when zookeepers were watching. In response, <laughs> zookeepers had to resort to dressing up as tourists to clandestinely observe him. Finally, as a sort of general security improvement, zookeepers ran an electric fence wire along the top of the exterior wall of Ken's enclosure and turned it on. This prevented at least one escape attempt when Ken managed to make it to the top of his wall but was zapped and retreated back into his cage. Oh, Seemingly defeated, but au contraire, Ken had merely been biding his time. And two years later, he escaped when the moat's pump went offline, which dried up sufficiently for Ken to walk across and hoist himself up over again. <laughs> You know what I've got in my head right now? Just an image of him, like, figuring out where the pumps are mm -hmm. for the moat pump and then, like, a, a Finding Nemo-esque scene of, like, sending an orangutan yeah. into the pipes to, like, block it up and be like, send the rock in, shove the rock <laughs> in, like, jam so, up the moat. This time, according to reports, Ken didn't return so quietly, quietly as in previous escape. When the fuzz came to take him home, he took off, giving zookeepers a bit of a fright as he headed directly towards the lion pen. Oh, God. That potential crisis was averted when Zuki was able to catch him before he made it there. Seeking to distract him from his escape attempts and thinking that maybe he was a bit jealous of Otis, who lived with three lady orangutans, zookeepers put four females into Ken's cage, hoping to turn his wanderlust into lust. 
This completely backfired, however, as Ken recruited his new friends to join in his escapes. <laughs> a few months later, two of his protégés, Jane and Kumang, found and transformed a five-foot-tall, a five-foot-long squeegee left behind in the pen into a tool to once again scale the wall. Jane made it all the way to the flamingos before having to be tranquilized. <laughs> Oh, Kumang returned to the enclosure agreeably. This was the last of Ken's escapes. In total, the zoo had to spend approximately $45,000 to ensure that his enclosure was escape-proof. Oh, God. I love that, though. Just... Right, we gave him, like, a harem of orangutans <laughs> to keep him distracted. No, you recruited them into the fucking mission. All you did is just give him more members of his fucking squad. Yeah. Oh, that was incredible. Just like, though, that story sticks with me. And I'll give, like, some props. That's today I found out. That's not one of my articles. That's uh, Melissa who wrote that one. And it's just the image of just the orangutan being, like, just chilling. Like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I, I, I just love, though, that they saw him running towards the lion enclosure. Like, oh, shit, no. <laughs> with just rocks in hand ready to go, like... Ah! It's like, uh, I think one of the, the biggest... Um, one of the most popular stories on the channel, uh, that we unfortunately had to take down because it got copyright struck. We'll have to put it back up at another point. Is um, about Stoffel the Honey Badger. Were you there when we recorded Stoffel the Honey Badger? I don't think you so. You know what? No. Okay, then. So, for people, I guess, like, that's one of the videos that people always ask, like, where did it go? And it got taken out for a copyright infringement. And, like, we just don't want another company to make money off it. Mm hmm. Um, so, I guess I'll now do another live reading of that for Lucas, who's not familiar with Stoffel the Honey Badger. So, oh, God. Uh, so this is you know, our sporadically updated series of um, people and animals who do not give a fuck. We're talking, yeah, about, yeah. We're, we're talking about Stoffel. So for the first time, and I, it's weird I'm reading my own article, maybe I do that every day. <laughs> for the first time in our sporadically updated series detailing the adventures of people who were born without a fuck-producing gland in their brain, the subject of the article today is an animal, specifically Stoffel the Honey Badger, who has been called an ambassador for his species due to the astonishingly blasé attitude and penchant for escaping his enclosure. A resident of the Mahalo Holo, uh, the Maholo Holo Wildlife Rehabilitation Centre in South Africa, since the early 2000s, Stoffel quickly became the centre's most famous animal resident, when news of his various escapes made the news. In fact, the centre is so indebted to the publicity Stoffel generates that they've named the centre's tuck shop after him and even paid a graphic designer to design um, a logo with him on it. <laughs> so the, the the logo for the talk shot is just him. So Stoffel's journey to international notoriety began soon after he arrived in the centre when his handler noticed him just wandering around doing badger things when they positive they just locked him in his cage. Stoffel continued to mysteriously slip his enclosure and will sometimes be found attacking random animals or eating oh, things in the kitchen of the talk shop now named in his honour. So, and as far as I'm aware, honey badgers are fucking vicious. They are one of the most vicious animals on earth, yes. Yeah. So on one occasion, Stoffel attacked a pride of lions housed nearby who were astonished <laughs> at the size of his tiny badger balls. They initially didn't know what to do. After a while, the lions got the upper hand and badly savaged the poor badger, something his handlers assumed would calm him down. However, instead, literally the first thing Stoffel did after getting out of Badger Hospital was a escape a second time to attack the lions again. See, I thought when you said, like, attacking animals, I thought it was like, right, this honey badger got into, you know, like, the red pandas. And it's no. like attacking, like, a cute little red panda. It's like, no, he went straight for a fucking pride of lions. Twice. Like, I'll have you. After this escape attempt, the decision was made to move Stoffel to a better secured enclosure. Not to protect him from the lions, but to protect the lions from him. <laughs> to keep Stoffel company, a female honey badger was also put into his enclosure. The hope being that Stoffel would be too busy fucking to want to escape. Within hours, Stoffel and his new lady badger friend had escaped and were roaming the centre. It would later emerge that Stoffel had convinced the new badger to work with him and escape the enclosure together. And, like, she stood on his back and then opened up the the little thing to get him out. So what we've learned is just, if an animal wants to escape, it doesn't matter how much sex you offer them. It's like, they will escape. They will. Frustrated, Stoffel's handler built an entirely new enclosure from scratch at considerable expense, custom designed to house a single animal. Stoffel. This new enclosure was basically a giant concrete basin devoid of any features, save for a few trees and assorted toys to keep Stoffel mentally stimulated. Again, within a couple of hours, Stoffel had escaped. <laughs> this time by climbing to the top of one of the trees near the edge of the enclosure and leaping to freedom. A few out, uh, starting to get annoyed, Stoffel's handlers cut all the trees down, and a few hours later, Stoffel escaped again. 
<laughs> this time by p- piling up all the rocks in his enclosure um, towards the edge and then climbing over them. Oh my god. In a fit of frustration, his handlers scoured his enclosure and removed every twig and rock until it resembled a concrete bowl with a badger in it. Later that night, the handler was awoken to the sound of someone breaking into his house. That someone oh was god. Stoffel. So the badger broke into his house. <laughs> Found out where they fucking live. Yeah. Like, give, give me back my rock. They, they never found out. How, like, that's the thing. He was like, how did he do it? And it turns out that what he did was he rolled up dirt into a giant ball and then climbed on top of the ball and then got out. Yeah, so he says here, though, yeah, so he says here, so, yep, Stoffel broke out in his escape proof enclosure and then broke into his handler's house. So not only did he escape from an enclosure, he broke into a lot through a locked door. And mm. when his handler went to inspect Stoffel's enclosure, he found that the wily badger had dug up a bunch of dirt, rolled it into a ball, and used it as a step to help him escape. At this point, he was forced to admit that nothing could hold Stoffel, and decided it'd be easier for everyone to just keep a close eye on him. Um, a yeah. few hours after this conversation took place, Stoffel escaped again um, by stealing a rake, parkouring it to the corner of his enclosure, and then climbing up it. And I ended it with a joke. At this point, it's no surprise to end up naming the section after Shoffel. He walks around the place like he fucking owned it anyway. <laughs> and I'm going to try now, see if I can send on Discord just, like, the GIF. I'm hoping I can send this GIF now that you'll be able to see. Oh, no, it's a PNG. Damn it. I can't get the GIF. Can I Can I get the GIF? Can I get, like, the, get the GIF of this? It's, um, oh, oh, God. Yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah, it's no. just just the image of like just this blur of a badger. Okay, so I'll send you like the gif if you want to click. There we go. Oh, that's showing up now. And just look at how fucking like technical this badger is. Oh my god! So describe what you see in Lucas. Because when I say he parkours a rake into the corner of the thing, he fucking parkours that rake. So yeah, he he gets this rake. He lifts it onto the top of his neck, then like rotates it around. Grabs it with his little arms or legs, and then just shoves it up into the corner, and actually props it up against the corner, and then climbs up it to escape, and climbs up it. Because yeah. I think they just left it in. They, they didn't realize. Oh, he's a badger. Well, what's a badger gonna do with a rake? It's like he's gonna use it to escape and go attack some lions. <laughs> like that's the thing, isn't it? At that point, would you not have learned that he will roll up his dirt? to like clump up a little ball and escape using that. Of course he's going to use a rake to his advantage. And like just those stories are incredible to me. Yeah. Like yeah. the Ken Allen one is amazing. Just Ken Allen. Cuz he's called Ken. It's Ken Allen the like the fucking orangutan. Ken Allen sounds like a, a character on fucking EastEnders. Yeah. Like, I want to see like <laughs> Phil Mitchell versus Ken Allen. Oh god. I like, I want the EastEnders cinematic universe man it's great.